breath. So, so we have covered, uh, no, automatic exception, why you will get, and uh, number, so null point exception, why you will get, and uh, so now we have to see number format exception, so why you will get it. So what is the reason for that? And uh, so these are the main things. And also array index out of bounds exception, you already know. So why we'll get uh, so array, so index out of bounds exception. Let's see these two. So number format exception is the wrong formatting of any value. So will lead to number format exception. Suppose you have a string variable value, alphabets. You are trying to convert them into numbers or digits. So that will lead to number format exception. Alphabets we cannot convert into numbers. If numbers are there in the string format, then it is possible. Then you can convert into so number format and you won't get any issue. So if you do any wrong formatting, that will lead to number format exception. So how you can convert a string object into primitive format? So there is a uh, wrapper classes in the Java. Wrapper classes mainly used for converting the objects into primitive format, primitive data into object format. You can do both. So that can be achieved with the wrapper classes. So how can we do? So this is the string object. So this object you need to convert into now primitive format. So what is the formula? So primitive data type, so variable name equal to, there is a wrapper class. So every primitive data type has a one wrapper class. So let me give you what are the eight primitive data types we have, right? So can you give what are the eight primitive data types? Yes, sir. What are eight primitive data types? Integer, short, integer, short, long, long, float, double, double, cat, boolean, right, boolean, right. So we have eight primitive data types. So you have to see um, the boolean first one, right. So this is a primitive data type. Primitive, and this is the wrapper class. So what is the wrapper class name is? Boolean, capital B. Boolean. And uh, Pair. So what is the wrapper class? Character. So byte. Byte. So byte wrapper class. Short. Short. Class naming convention, just following the class naming conventions. Other than that, nothing. And uh, int integer. integer. Integer wrapper class. Long. Long. Long wrapper class. <coughs> Load. Load wrapper class. Load wrapper class. Double. Double wrapper class. 
So that is the double wrapper class. So this is the so primitive data types and respect to classes. So here, that's what the formula here. First, you are converting this formula is for when you are converting object into primitive format. Mm -hmm. This is the formula. This what we are converting here. Object. String to integer. 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 So you can convert it to other formats also. Any of this data, this object into this this primitive format. So for example, if you want to convert uh, long, so long L equal to long wrapper class dot parse long of string object. So like that you can uh, <coughs> so create that. And that's the how to convert object into primitive format. Okay. So other than that, nothing, just closing this. Okay. Next one is array index out of bounds exception. So array index out of bounds exception is, so basically when you will get array index out of bounds exception, if you are trying to access the out of size array size so uh, so array size more than the array size you are trying yeah. to access yeah. or you are you are entering the more than the array size you are inserting Insert. at wrong index the elements you are inserting at wrong index so these all leads to so uh -huh. Array index, array out, index of out of boundary exception. Exception. So let's see here. Now your array size is five, but you are inserting at the what what index? Ten. Ten. So tenth index. That means eleventh element you are inserting. So this is the eleventh element. Tenth index means what? <laughs> Zero plus ten. A total eleven One. elements. So eleventh element. You are inserting, but the size itself is a five. Five. And you cannot insert more than the five. So that is the reason it is going to throw array index out of bounds exception. So you know now what is the reason for exceptions. So why you will get a so arithmetic exception? If you are trying to divide by, by number zero. by zero. Oh. Hmm. That is the reason you, you know the reason. So any number you are dividing by zero, that will lead to arithmetic, arithmetic exception. Arithmetic exception. So that is the so how you can so use that. So the arithmetic exception if you get. So how to handle? I'll show you now. So any exception comes. How to handle that? And another one, if you, for example, null pointer exception, you know what is the reason for null pointer exception. So null pointer exception means if the, your variable has a null value. Okay, your variable has a null value. And uh, And you are trying to access that null variable without assigning a value.
Okay. So let's see how to handle all these exceptions. So to handle those exceptions, you need to use a try catch block. So what is this exception handling? Basically, it will continue your flow of execution till the end, even the exception occurs also. That's the main objective of this exception handling. It should not stop there. So till the end, you have to continue. There is an exception. Okay, let it throw exception, then move for further. So that's the, uh, no, how you can main object. use that main objective of this uh, exception handling. So how to handle that then? So you can use, there are five keywords, try, catch, finally, throw, 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 and throw keywords. They are the five exception handling keywords, which will help us to handle the exceptions at the runtime. So Java try block. Java try block is used to end. So because basically you will enclose the which line of code is giving an exception. That line only you place inside the try block. Try curly bracket and the exception line, which line is giving an exception to you. That line you keep in the try block and then close the, with the complete the curly bracket end. So basically you will write this try catch finally throw in the methods. Basically try block you will write inside the method body only. So if exception occurs at the particular statement of the try block, the rest of the block code will not execute. For example, in the try block, you have five lines of code. Second line, you got an exception. Third, fourth, fifth lines won't execute. It will skip and move to catch block. Because second line, you got an exception. It is so catch block will catch that exception in the second line. And that will be given clear indication for the users. So on this line, you got an exception, this, this exception. So, but still the code will continue till the end. That is the, this uh, Java try catch, try block and catch block will help us. So, so that when automatically say three, four, five lines are skipped, right? So that's why what you need to do, which code is belongs to that, that same lines of code, which is relevant to that, that code only you need to keep inside the try block. So if it is not relevant, don't keep that in the try block. Unnecessary, you're going to skip that. So make sure, so it is irrelevant, keep outside of the try block. So that you, it will to execute continuously without any uh, no, missing the execution flow. So it is recommended to keep uh, the code in try block that will not throw an exception. So you should not keep, you should not keep, not to recommend to keep the code, which is not throwing an exception, which is not relevant to that exception. So that's the try block. So this is the simple syntax, try brackets. So which statement that is causing an exception, then catch, exception type e and uh, this is the catch block so you are going to use it then syntax of try finally block so try finally block say so try block and finally so you can write a try catch one or no. try finally block another one or you can write all three try catch so catch block after parenthesis will be there. So in the parenthesis, you have to write exception class types. Yesterday I have given exception class types. You can write exception class types here and object reference you give. That object reference inside, you can put a print stack trace method you call or get message method you can call on this object reference. So e dot print stack trace. What is mean by this print stack trace? This method will print complete stack message, which line you got an error message in the try block and everything it will print, which method, which line, everything it will be shown to you very clearly. That's what this print stack trace method will 
do that for us. And it's a meaningful exception message. So that's a try block, then catch block. So what this try catch, try to execute, okay? try for execution. If something goes wrong, this catch block will catch that error and print for you. That's a try catch. And try finally. So you try execute all the code. Finally, you execute this. Even the exception occurs also. Uh, it will finally block code will execute. Even exception is not there. This block of code will execute. That's a try finally block. So we have seen final, finalize, right? So now we are seeing finally block. So finally block. Okay. So that's a Java try catch blocks and finally block we'll discuss more. So what is catch block is doing? So the catch block is used to handle the exception by declaring type of exception. So within the parameter. So the parenthesis basically within the parenthesis. The declared exception must be the parent class exception or the generated exception type. So where the good approach is to declare the generated type of exception. So the catch block must be used after the try block only, right? So catch block alone you cannot use. You must have a try block first, then catch block. So the catch block must be used after the try block only. You can use multiple catch blocks with a single try block. So that's the answer you can see here. One try block, multi catch blocks. See here, first one is arithmetic exception. Second one is a reindex out of bounds exception. And fourth one is exception E. Exception E. So these are the different type of uh, one try multi catch blocks. So finally block. Finally block basically uses to execute the most important code. So that's very important for you. Such kind of code, if you want to execute, you will use finally block. So the finally block is used to execute important code, such as closing the connections, database connections, and closing the file streams. And Java finally block is always executed whether the exception is handled or not. It doesn't matter. So Java finally block allows so follows try or catch block. After try block or after catch block, you can write this finally block. So this is the syntax. Try, catch, this parenthesis is missing here. This is the typo. And finally block. So finally block is just uh, no, finally keyword after directly curly bracket. But here catch block after, you must put parenthesis, parenthesis inside exception type space object reference must be there. A simple example of finally block is, so this is the one. Try int num 121 by zero. That's automatic exception. Finally, and it will execute. I'll show you the, all this code, okay? So that's a finally block. So why you use Java finally? So what is the reason why you need to use Java finally block? So finally block in Java can be used to put clean up code such as closing the files, closing the database connections. So all this, anything you want to execute mandatorily, you don't want to skip that. So such kind of code, if you want to execute, you will use a finally block. So when finally block code doesn't execute, so the circumstances which so which is going to stop finally block so the one first thing is the death of a thread so and the system not exit method due to an exception arising in the finally block so all these cases the finally block code doesn't execute okay so these are the reasons death of a thread thread is so no more exist that and also system.exit if you write 
So such cases also finally block code doesn't execute due to an exception arising in the finally block. So in the finally block and uh, so exception arises. So then finally block so is not going to execute. So finally and close. The close method is used. So in the statement is used to close all the open streams in the program or a database connections if you want to close. You can use a close method inside the finally block. So basically, it's a good practice to use close method in the finally block so that it will close all the objects properly. So you can use on the files also, file, file objects, database connection objects. You can use this close method. The next one is Java throw keyword. So Java throw keyword is basically if you want to throw your custom exception message explicitly, so automatically it won't throw. You want to give your custom message, then you can use Java throw keyword. Java throw keyword. So syntax of throw keyword is throw new exception class, the error message you can keep. So there's a throw new exception class this is the error message so this is the this is an object right this is an object so how many will agree with this yeah yes 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 what type of constructor are we are using here um, parameterized parameterized constructor but object is this one so this is the Throw keyword after what is followed? Throw keyword after what is there? Object. 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 Throw keyword after what is there? So that object. Is throw object. is followed by an object. So throw is followed by an, an object. object. So this is the, an example. Throw new arithmetic exception or custom message. Generally, arithmetic exception will throw a custom message. Uh, the, the, it's one system generated message. But you can change your overriding that. So that's the pro keyword is going to help you. So I'll tell you this uh, throws keyword, last one, throws keyword. So Java throws keyword basically is used to declare a compile time exceptions. You want to declare. So you will use a throws keyword. Basically, you were, you were a Eclipse uh, ID or ever, any ID you are using, it will ask you, okay, it will suggest you, okay, this line is going to throw uh, some exception, please declare it now. So in the compile time itself, you have to declare it. That's a throws declaration. So this also handles the exceptions, but again, try catch also will handle the exception. Then why do you need this keyword? It's a good question or not? What is the need of having throws keyword? Again, the same functionality is served by try catch. Then why, why do you need throws keyword again? So there is this reason for that. See that this reason. And so we can handle the exceptions using try catch block. The throws does the same thing that try catch does. But there are some use cases where you would prefer throws over the try catch block. So what are the reasons? So let's see here. See, this is the method. The method inside you are declaring a try catch blocks. So this one. So suppose you have several such kind of methods. So which is having a multiple try catch blocks. Then what will happen? So it will keep on increasing the number of lines of code, right? The method. So it's going to be lengthy. So it's unnecessary, very long, and it will be less readable. So such cases, this, so this one you're going to use this. So one way to overcome this lengthy problem, all this thing is, so declare the exceptions in the method signature using throws and handle the exceptions where you're calling this method by try catch. So that it will be easy, see that? Public void my method throws arithmetic exception comma null point exception. 
you don't need again a try catch blocks again so where the try, throws keyword you are uh, adding throws is followed by what exception what is this madam uh, what is this class class right this is the classes these are classes throws mm -hmm. is followed by a class you can write one class or multiple class but where you are adding this throws keyword which line you are adding mm -hmm. What do you call this? What do you call this? So this is a method signature line you are adding or a method prototype line you are adding that. So throws is followed by a class and throw is followed by? Class name. Class. Oh, sorry. Throw is uh, object. Throw is followed by object. Throws is followed by class. Class, exception class. And a throw is used in the method signature line. Throws is used in the method signature line. But throw is used in within the method body. So you will use in the method body. See this. So you will use in the method body. This is the method body inside you are going to use throw keyword. But throws is this. So that's the difference is also I'm covering here directly. So the difference between throw and throws keyword is Java throw keyword is used to explicitly throw an exception. Java throws keyword is used to declare an exception. So checked exceptions cannot be propagated with the throw keyword. Checked exceptions can be propagated with the throws. So throw is followed by an instance Throws is followed by class. Throw is used within the method. Throws is used with, with the method signature. You cannot throw multiple exceptions, but you can declare multiple exceptions with the throws keyword. Then what is the difference between final, finally, and finalize? So final is used so to declare a class method and variable restrictions you can add with the final keyword. Final class can't be inherited. Final method can't be overridden. Final variable value cannot be changed. So final variable value cannot be changed. So final is a keyword, just it's a keyword. Finally is a block. So which is used to execute an important code and uh, it's a block. So finalize is a method in the object class, which is used to perform the cleanup process just uh, before our, no object is garbage collected. Just before, so object is garbage collected. Finalize is a method. Finalize is a method. So here hacker rank problems are there. So if you are interested, you can go and solve these problems, okay? So let's go and see now uh, some of the programs and how we can handle this um, uh, exception handling. So we'll see that. So let's go and create a new package overall. So I'm going to create a new package exception handling. So, automatic exception demo. So, take the main method and say directly, you should not give automatic exception because already existing class you cannot create again, right? That's why I'm giving a demo, some new name. So let's declare uh, some variables. Private static int a equal to 25 or 30. So B, I'm not giving anything. Okay. So let's do that. Int result equal to A by B. So what will happen now? 
arithmetic exception. B value will be zero. Error. So even though if I do rest of the code, let me write the rest of the code. What will happen? You see this. So I'm writing the rest of the code. Okay, so let's see now execute what will happen. You see, so what happened? Any code executed? No. How will you debug this? So what is your approach? Try catch method. So how will you debug first? <laughs> Later, first this okay. uh, issue has come, madam. How do? What is your no approach to yeah. solve this problem? Run. How will you understand this? What is why you are getting this error? Run this exception why you are getting? Run. Time. Which line you are getting and how do you know this? Yeah. Um, then. Hmm? Change to debug mode and. Uh... No, first of all, by so, no, you don't have anything, madam. So by seeing this log, so okay. what where you will understand? Java seven. Uh, seven I think exception demo dot Java line seven. Yeah, that's right. So you have to read first, okay? So from the beginning, exception in thread main java dot lang arithmetic exception slash by zero. That means it divided by zero. Then go the package name dot class yes. name dot method name line number. Seven. What is Seven. the line number? Seven. 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 That means you have an error here in the seventh line. Is this clear how to check the error messages? Which line you're getting error? Which line you're Eight. getting this automatic exception? What Seven. do you need? How do you check that? I'm looking at the reading. Hmm? By reading. By reading the output console. Mm -hmm. Then what, what you will look for that? Console, there is a bigger message also will be there. How you will look for that? Package name dot. Package name, class name, and which line we got the error. That's the, always remember this. Look for your package name, class, class name, name, method name, and line hmm. number. So then, so that zero by zero, this divided by zero means line number seven. You are dividing a number by zero. That is the reason. Now I'll put this in the try catch block. So let's put in the try catch surround with a try catch block. So if you want, you can include a exact exception you know, right? So you can add arithmetic, right? Arithmetic exception. See that e dot print stack trace. It will print the complete stack trace where you're getting error and all those things. So I'll may print the message also. Exception message is a dot get message. 
p dot get message so like this you can execute now see so previously see now here this line sub code is not executed at all it stopped here only so now we added the try catch block now see what is the difference please catch the difference before try catch block what is the behavior now after adding the try catch block what is the behavior that's important see now still exception arised but the program execution is continuous the program execution is continuous continue. so i can write even finally block also gets executed always. So this is the how your code get executed. See, even finally block code also started executing. See, first, what happened? Try block and the eighth line you got an error. So eighth line you got an error. Where it jumped then? It went to catch block. So that means this line is not executed. So this catch block executor. After catch block, where it is going? Finally block. Mm -hmm. So finally block after the all the lines of code is executed. So this is the how you need to execute the code line by line. So you execute line by line, then it will continue. So now there is an exception. That's why the catch block is executing. If there is no exception, for example, if I give value, now what will happen? No. Try block will execute and then it will go to finally block. Say try block executed and directly jump to finally block. No catch block at all. No catch block at all. That's it. So that's the, uh, no, the try catch finally block means. So remember always when catch block will execute, when there is an exception in the try block. If there is no exception in the try block, catch block won't execute. So then try will execute, finally, finally will execute, then rest of the code. So if there is an exception in the try block, catch okay. block will execute, execute, then finally block will execute. Cute. Okay, so that's the try catch finally how it will be executed. Okay, so that's it for the day. Any questions? One minute, huh? somebody.